Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast. Hour one. Hello, America. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here across the United States of America and online around the world right now. That's kind of weird. The phone number, 877-973-7425. I say it's kind of big because every once in a while, like when I'm picking up new stations, I try to look. We've got live streaming metrics. If you if you text Eric to 33777, you get the live stream. And we can track the people by city. I can see who how many people are listening in such and such city. So when we're headed to a new station or we're trying to get a new station, I can say, look, I've already got X number of people in your area listening. Like I've got several thousand people I used to be on in in middle Georgia uh, where I live and and I'm not right now. uh, And it's, we've got more people I'm convinced listening online than they've got listening to the radio station. But I notice, like I'm really big in Singapore and all I can think is it's got to be VPNs or something because I get the, the thousands of people a day listening in Singapore. It's just kind of weird to think about. In any event, here I am. And I, I want to not talk about raw politics right now. We don't need to talk about Laura Bober. By the way, that was the first date. Did y'all hear? She said yesterday she gave an interview. It was the first date. She's getting handsy in the theater when he's rubbing all over her breasts, and it was the first date. Good Lord. Let's just run through all the bases on the first date. Oh, my gosh. And we don't need to talk about that. There's actually a really big story we need to talk about, and it's not going to get attention. I get asked a lot, uh, how do you do show prep? And I I keep a little outline of stories I want to talk about, and I, I try to find the stories that I actually think are the most important story that nobody else is going to talk about. And sometimes there's an obvious, like, really big story. For example, we will get to here shortly the front page above the fold story about anxiety building among Democrats. They're trying to get uh, the seasoned members of the Senate to go to the White House and tell Joe Biden you need to not run again. Uh, I don't think they'll get there. We'll talk about that. But I actually think this is the biggest story. It's not getting the coverage of the other stories. And that's why you have me to make you aware of a story that should be the dominant news story of the day. And it's not getting attention, but it's going to have massive ramifications on you. This is from Bloomberg News. The world's oil refiners are proving powerless to make enough diesel. Opening a new inflationary front and depriving economies of a fuel that powers industry and transportation alike. With oil futures rocketing on Friday, they were just below $95 a barrel in London, the rally pales in comparison with the surge in diesel. U.S. prices jumped above $140 to the highest ever for this time of year on Thursday. Europe's equivalent soared 60% since the summer, and it could get worse. Saudi Arabia and Russia have turned down the taps on production of crudes that are richer in diesel. On September 5th, both nations, leaders in the OPEC Plus Alliance, announced they would prolong those curbs through year-end, a period in which demand for the fuel usually picks up. Now, there are a number of problems here. One of which is uh, refining capacity for diesel is down. Environmental policies in the United States and Europe trying to push everyone to an electric future that is not here and is not really even on the horizon, have gone ahead and curtailed the refining capacity to refine diesel out of the system. Remember, oil, raw oil out of the ground has to be refined. And it can be refined into components to make gasoline and diesel. Diesel and gasoline are not the same. The problem is that most of your 18-wheelers that are out there on the road, a lot of your tractors that are in the fields, 
the combines and harvesters, a lot of generators that plants rely on, they're diesel powered. You can tell a diesel engine in a car from a gasoline engine, it makes a different noise. The fuel combusts differently. It is a major industrial component. And one of the things that American and European governments did is they took a field of dreams approach to energy. That field of dreams approach is what what was the movie field of dreams? If you build it, they will come. And with the American and the European uh, energy mindset, it wasn't if you build it, they will come, but if you stop them from building, they will go. If you stop them from building refineries, if you stop them from building oil wells, if you stop them from building fracking facilities, they will go to batteries. It hasn't happened. Just think about California. California is now regulating uh, tractor trailers, and by, I think, 2026, you will not be able to bring a tractor trailer, an 18-wheeler, into the state of California unless it is electric. Do you know what they do not have in California? This is very important for you to understand. Do you know what they don't have in California? Recharging facilities catering to 18-wheelers. That they, they don't have them. They just think that um, because they've mandated this change, somebody's going to build them. But nobody's building the recharge facilities necessary for the 18-wheelers because nobody's converting their 18-wheelers. And everybody's convinced that uh, somebody else is going to blink first. It's a game of chicken with policies that will have a direct impact on the entirety of the United States, not just California, because so much freight, so much shipping comes through the ports in California. This is really bad stuff. You add into that the lack of refining capacity and the lack of production of fuels that easily refine into diesel. This is something else you miss. In the chemistry of oil, some oil refines more easily into diesel. Some readily refines into diesel, some doesn't. And Saudi Arabia and Russia have curtailed their production of supply that refines easily into diesel. In addition to that, not only do you have a supply shortage, you have a refining capacity shortage because the Americans and the Europeans have reduced the ability of refineries to refine oil into gas and diesel to try to force everyone into battery-powered cars. That force has not happened. Instead, prices are going up on everything. And the only people who win in the push to electric vehicles is China. So how is this going to play out? And why is this the most important story of the day? It actually is the most important story of the year, probably. Why? Because the tractors and the combines and the harvesters and the fuel they run on diesel, that's now $140 a barrel, which means the farmer's costs have gone up, which means the cost of the production of foods has gone up, the cost of the production of corn and grain for animal feed has gone up, which means the cost of the animals are going to go up because their food's more expensive, because the fuel to produce the food is more expensive. The cost to transport the cow to the slaughterhouse has gone up because the trucks use diesel. The cost to power the backup generators at the industrial facilities that design and produce much of the industrial supply in the United States goes up because the costs of the diesel to put into the backup generators goes up. The cost of shipping worldwide goes up because many of the ships at sea are not gas-powered, they're diesel-powered. So the cost to take a cruise goes up. The cost to ship by ship instead of plane goes up. Apple, in their keynote event uh, for the iPhone on Tuesday, was bragging about Uh, A week ago, they were bragging about how much more they ship by sea now and not by air because the carbon emissions of shipping by sea are less. Well, your cost of shipping by sea goes up dramatically when the diesel fuel for the tanker ship 
goes up. Costs are going to go up across the board. Now, don't look now. The Federal Reserve is meeting this week. And they're going to assess whether or not to continue to raise interest rates. The consensus right now is that they're not going to that they're going to raise interest rates again, just not this week. But a lot of this is government policy beyond interest rates. And this administration is deeply, 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 deeply hostile to the production of oil and gas. And they have provided no real means for anyone to transition. So essentially, if you want to transition now to an electric vehicle, the government will give you a tax rebate, a tax credit to some degree to offset your taxes. The problem is uh, that money is not here for you today. So the government's not giving you, for example, $5,000 to go put a down payment on an electric vehicle. What they're saying is that if you put down a $5,000 payment on an electric vehicle today, that Next year, when you file your taxes, they're going to give you $5,000 back on your taxes. Well, that's all well and good tomorrow, but uh, who among us can afford to do that? Now, some of you are thinking, well, why don't I wait until next year and I'll put my down payment on the day before I pay my taxes, and then when I pay my taxes, I'll take the credit. You can't do that. Why? Because you're spending the money in 2024. And when you file your taxes, they're for 2023. They're retroactive to the last year. You're not filing your 2024 taxes in April of next year. You're filing your 2023. So if you want to take advantage of it, you got to take advantage of that tax credit by the end of this year. And then I guess you could, in theory, you could buy your Tesla on December 31st and file your taxes on January 2nd. But then you still got to wait for the government to send you a check back. So you're on the hook for a little while. And how long is it going to process? God only knows these days. They haven't made a transition to electric vehicles easy. They thought they could incentivize you through high prices and tax rebates and tax credits. And they just don't understand the way most Americans work. Most Americans in the Biden economy are living paycheck to paycheck. And this transition out of diesel and gas to electric is taking time. It's driving up people's costs. And now we have a shortage of diesel. There's still hope, according to Bloomberg News that the diesel crunch can ease with cooler winter months approaching, the weather-related constraints on refineries decrease, even if some of them undergo routine seasonal maintenance. We think margins have overshot for now, says one expert, adding that stretched market positioning, the temporary nature of refinery disruptions could spark a reversal. Even so, there are worries about supply from key diesel exporting nations. Russia has indicated it's looking to limit the volume of fuel it sends to global markets. China recently issued new fuel export quotas, but traders and analysts in Asia said the volume currently planned won't be enough to prevent a tight market. And then there are storage hubs where supplies are running low. Diesel is the fuel of the 18-wheeler truck that moves products from factory to market. So when prices spike, those higher transport costs get passed on to businesses and consumers, says Clay Siegel, director of global oil service at Rapidian Energy Group. While there's been growing hope the U.S. could avoid a recession, an energy spike undermines that progress. This is the logical consequence of government policy. It's also the logical consequence of the Biden administration continuing to dump all over Saudi Arabia, which has also walked out of a peace deal with Israel at the last minute. The consequences of this administration are playing large in what's happening right now at the pump. I know a lot of you listening right now are actually truck drivers. We get a lot of calls from truck drivers. They're paying through the nose right now for diesel. And the price is only going to go up more. And who do you think is going to shoulder that price? You, with higher priced goods and services, which is going to limit your take-home pay, decrease what you're already bringing home, and probably push us into the recession the Biden administration assures us is no longer coming. This, my friends, this is Bidenomics. I run a small business. You may not realize this radio show is small business. I've got employees. i got management headaches, hirings of employees, thankfully no firings. But you got to deal with the management burden sometimes. If you're a small business owner, you probably deal with those headaches as well. And sometimes I've realized it's better to 
outsourced to an HR department. So you don't have to be the bad guy. Your employees can like you and you want to deal with an HR department that your employees can like for the most part when they need HR assistance. And you got to think about these things as a small business owner. Let's say somebody isn't showing up when they're supposed to. You don't want to have to be the confrontational bad guy. That's where Bambi comes in. Or an employee reports a serious issue like sexual harassment, and you're not even sure if you got a documented policy. Bambi can take care of those things. With Bambi, you get access to a dedicated HR manager starting at just $99 a month. They're available by phone, by email, real-time chat, so you can do onboardings and terminations that run smoothly. Your team members help coaching for peak performance. Your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations, and they always change. Y'all, Bambi's dedicated HR managers are U.S.-based individuals who are dedicated to your business. So they seem like they're on your team, not just somebody from a different company, but actually on your team with the personal touches you want. So if you need HR assistance for your growing small business, reach out to Bambi, Bambi Bambi.com. Go right now, type in Eric Erickson under podcast when you sign up. It'll help the show. It's spelled Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E dot com, Bambi dot com. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast. Start moving your business forward with great, dedicated, team-oriented HR, Bambi dot com. All right, this is too good. Welcome back. It's Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. Our affiliate WICC in Bridgeport, Connecticut, they sent this along. This is the headline, State Officials Await Ballot Fraud Investigation as uh, Gomez campaign heads to court. I assume it's Gomez and not Gomes, G-O-M-E-S. So you've got, um, it, it's it's a Democratic primary election in Bridgeport, Connecticut. The challenger announced plans to seek a court injunction to halt certification of his apparent loss to the incumbent. Now, why? <laughs> they have video of a woman repeatedly returning to a drop box. Sound familiar? It's a supporter of the incumbent mayor made several trips to deposit absentee ballots in a city drop box. State law requires voters return ballots themselves, but allows for a few exceptions, like family members of students or caretakers who are permitted to return ballots for voters who are sick or disabled. Now, Here's the separation between uh, what the the true the vote people claimed about Trump. They had cell phone data. They didn't have actual images. In fact, of the the videos they had, they're being sued by one guy for defamation because it turned out he was drop he was legally allowed to be dropping it off. And in several other cases, it didn't pan out. The state of Georgia, the Secretary of State, is suing that organization for making claims without providing the evidence. In this case, they've actually got the actual legit videotaped evidence. The allegations have even drawn attention from statewide Democrats, including the governor who's demanding answers for this. Now, you got to understand, and and, and this is one one bit of nuance here, that the votes are legal votes. You, You can't, once they've been counted, pull them out. But if you saw someone dumping a ton of votes in a drop box, which they did, caught on tape, they've identified the person. Um, well, that's not supposed to happen. So what they're doing is they're blaming um, lack of, of, or in their phrase, a few bad actors and undereducated electorate. In other words, stupid voters who didn't realize you can't just give your ballot to anybody to hand back in. Um, It's kind of funny. This is happening in a Democratic primary, and they're having to take it seriously because, well, they got it on video up in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Now, we got to move on. I, I, this whole show, this whole hour at least, is going to be economic. So let me tell you how to save some money. Uh, 84% off, no less, uh, post office UPS rates, and find the chip, uh, cheapest and fastest shipping office. So I actually did this yesterday. I did it again, stamps.com. I have a stamps.com. I, I've, I've long time been a member, but man, y'all, I bought a little thermal printer. A little thermal printer, you don't have to change like toner cartridges or ink cartridges. It just prints out the labels, makes it easy. And I did this with Stamps.com yesterday. Uh, I had to send a package to a guy who works uh, for a company up in Nashville and had my label, had my scale, measured it out, got it done. I walked right into UPS. I dropped it off and I saved money. You can too. Over a million businesses use Stamps.com. Right now, you can sign up. You use code ERIC. You click on the microphone. You put in my name, ERIC. You get a special offer, a four-week trial, free postage, and a free digital scale. 
I had to buy my scale, but it still works. There's no long-term commitment. There's no contract. That's it. No contract, no long-term commitment. All you do is go to stamps.com, click the microphone, enter my name, Eric, E-R-I-C-K. Get started now. You don't have to stand in line. You can even schedule pickups at your home or office for packages. It makes it so much easier to ship. Stamps.com, click the mic, put my name in. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here, and phone lines are open, 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, as always, text ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. If you want to find out more, follow me around social media and the like, and welcome to those of you listening in Phoenix. Glad to have you on board now. I'm not a financial expert, and I I, I always feel compelled to say that before I get into these sorts of topics. And, and again, uh, th- this is so much more important than the minutia of the Republican and Democratic campaigns and, and other stuff. Uh, maybe not as important as, as talking about what happened to poor old Nick Chubb last night. Ah, oh, that was awful. I'm so glad ABC did not show that replay. I don't like to watch those things. Like all my friends love those videos where, where people are like do stupid things. They step on rakes and and break their nose when the, when the the when the rake smashes their faces up and everybody like I don't like them I just cringe and oh I didn't need to see a replay of that well, well I'll, I'll, there's a relevant story there we'll get to it later but I, I I do feel compelled to say I'm I'm not a financial expert I used to have a pretty good head on my shoulders when it came to investing in stocks and and had a good little portfolio of my own ultimately sold everything to pay off debts medical bills things like that with with um, my wife's health and and whatnot and. Uh, at this point, all I want to do is focus on giving you guys a great show every day, and I got to rely on other people to do investments and stuff for me. Uh, I got my my um, buddy David Nicholas and, and John Lindvig. I, I have a couple of great guys I rely on, uh, David Bonson, and, and I, I just I've, I've got a good team of, of really solid guys around me who can answer my questions and help me because I don't have the bandwidth for it anymore. But I do have to pay attention to it, and so do you, because there are there are issues in the world today that will impact your family. So I say all of that to talk about this. If you have listened in the last number of weeks, you've heard a growing assessment that somehow the Federal Reserve is going to be able to land the plane and everything's going to work out hunky-dory, everything's going to be fine, we're not going to have a recession. And yet, you have so many Americans who don't feel like the economy is good for them right now. I want to play this clip for you. This is Janet Yellen. Uh, She was in an interview on CNN. They were asking her about why Americans don't feel good about the economy. I agree with you that there's a disconnect and um, I don't have a simple and convincing answer. But Americans have been through a lot. The pandemic really took a toll on American families, on children, on households. Um, We are enjoying a remarkable recovery, but um, also with high inflation, much of it reflecting supply bottlenecks that developed uh, during the pandemic and then with Russia's brutal um, attack on Ukraine, we saw a surge in uh, gas prices, in food prices. Um, so Americans have um, been reeling from high inflation. They do realize in polls that it's coming down. We can stop there. So notice that the pivot to blame Russia. Okay, here's a problem. This is actually a, a really big problem. And it's there are aspects to this. So, so let's begin here. We are now in a moment of normal economics as far as interest rates go. Now, what do I mean? They're the highest they've been in two decades, but for historic purposes, interest rates, four to five percent interest rates, we're a little higher than that, but four to five percent interest rates is normal economic times. When you have four to five percent interest rates, which we've had the the last number of years have been a historic anomaly. When you have four to five percent interest rates, there's a way of doing business, and it's the normal way of doing business. Banks make money with savings accounts, retirees on fixed incomes, they can invest there, they can make a rate of return on their savings. 
people can manage around their mortgages. All these things are sort of factored in, except in the last decade plus, we've had virtually 0% interest rates, very, very low interest rates. So I've got a, uh, I, I, I've, I've got a Yukon Denali. I bought it every three years or so. I'll get it. I put about 100,000 miles on a car every three years. And with warranty, and I, I drive so much, I, I, I drive long distances, I want a reliable car. I, I tend to just keep a, every three years, I trade it in. And, and as long as you get under $100,000, the, the trade is very good. I don't know that I will with this one. Why? Because my interest rate on my present car is three quarters of a percent, 0.75%. The mortgage on my home is like two and a half percent. We refinance. Actually, no, I take that back. It's, I think it's like at three. Better than what you're going to get right now. Mortgages are at a historic, well, not historic, but but pretty significant multi-decade highs. A lot of major companies in the country were able to do deals and do investments that they could not do at normal interest rates. And again, a normal interest rate, 4 to 5% in the, the post-World War II history of the United States, really for the whole of the 20th century, a 4% interest rate is a pretty normal thing. And businesses operated knowing there was a 4% interest rate. So when interest rates got to pretty much nothing, and in some com- companies or com- countries, remember, they had negative interest rates, you were getting paid for borrowing the money. Businesses could do things. And so you had this happen, the rise of the second generation of the internet economy. The rise of the first generation of the internet economy, you had major corporations, they went online, like Apple, Dell, and the like, and you could order your computers online. The second generation of the internet that came now, Instant Cart, uh, um, uh, Uber, Lyft, these new companies where they could grow their business and they did not have to be profitable. And they did not have to be profitable because the loans from the banks, got to follow along with me here. The loans from the banks were at such low interest rates, these companies could use other investment vehicles that exceeded the interest rate on their loans to be able to pay the loans. So they did other investments that generated more money than what they were paying on their loans, and so it was easy to pay off the loans. And the companies, as a result, did not have to make a profit. They just had to grow. For the last decade or so, with really low interest rates, really low interest rates, a lot of these digital startups and these tech companies, the DoorDashes and the Ubers and the Instacarts and and the like, they were just able to grow and show they had more and more consumers. They didn't have to turn a profit. Now, suddenly, interest rates are up. The other investment schemes they were using to pay their debt, they're not working anymore. Not only that, a lot of them have office space, and their employees aren't coming to the office, and they're paying rents on offices that are empty. You've got uh, major banks that are holding the office spaces. They've been subletting. Those offices are now empty. They can't put people in them. We are headed towards financially destabilizing times. On top of that, something else is happening. You got all of that. You got me? You you had really low interest rates so they could grow. They didn't have to worry about a profit. They had other investments that exceeded the interest on the loans. Now that the interest rates have gone up, their other investment schemes aren't working as well because of the, the cost of doing business with interest. So now their loans, they're struggling. Their companies got big. They weren't profitable. They had all these problems. And now there's something else. Hedge funds have been making bets on the economy, and those bets are more and more ungrounded from reality. There is an imbalance because hedge funds trying to still make money have been exploiting tiny differences between the prices of treasury bonds and the futures market. This doesn't make a ton of sense to me So I'm going to explain it to you in the way that makes most sense to me. And that is more and more hedge funds have increasingly become convinced the Fed's not going to raise interest rates. So they've been making bets on the presumption that despite the Federal Reserve continuing to tell us they are going to raise interest rates, that in fact they're not going to raise interest rates. 
So these companies are making bets in the financial markets, contrary to the advice of the Federal Reserve, convinced they know better than the Federal Reserve governors who are going to actually make the decision. Back during COVID, when the government did mass bailouts of businesses, they just were writing blank checks. They were propping up businesses. That's called moral hazard. When the government decides to prop up all these businesses that shouldn't be propped up, that should go out of business, the government creates a moral hazard in that the companies that stay afloat and should have died begin to bet that the government will bail them out again and again. So they continue to make risky bets, knowing that if things go bad, the government will bail them out. You got a lot of hedge funds now making these risky bets, thinking if they bet badly, the government will just bail them out. So you have high diesel prices. You have risky bets on interest rates. You've got businesses that are over leveraged now that have too much office space, that have loans where the interest rates now, they can't even pay the interest. And in all of this, you have the Biden administration saying the economy is really good when the public doesn't think it is. Add into that China. China could be our saving grace in all of this. Why? Because money is fleeing China. Now that our interest rates are high, our interest rates are higher than where the Chinese interest rates are. The Chinese can't bring up their interest rates because their economy is beginning to deflate. Prices are crashing. So China needs to create inflation in their markets where we're dealing with too much inflation. They're, not, they're dealing with not enough inflation. Prices are starting to collapse. So the Chinese have to keep their interest rates low, which is causing money to leave China and flow into the United States because people can park their money in a savings account in the United States and make way more money than they could in China right now. This is very complicated, and I don't mean to confuse you. What I want you to get out of this are a couple of things. One, all of these people in our government assure us the economy is looking really good. We're not going to have a recession, and people should be grateful. Two, there are more and more signs on the horizon that catastrophic debts are being built up because businesses are making bad bets on the economy because they've forgotten what it's like to do business when interest rates are at 4%. They got so used to 0% interest rates, they forgot how to do business at a 4% interest rate, which is actually the norm. On top of that, you've got capital markets around the world flowing money into this country where bets are being made on our economy premised on the idea that the betters know more than the Federal Reserve. All of that has the potential to destabilize our economy and to do so at a far more rapid pace than what would otherwise happen. So you've got the government right now telling you everything is fine. There are no warning signs on the horizon. Meanwhile, you look out at the horizon and all you see are red lights flashing from the price of diesel to the crazy bets that hedge funds are making on the stock market and with the bond yield to the problems in China to the problems in other countries, to the problems with tech companies now who can't afford to pay back their, their loans because of interest rates, to the problems of banks holding a lot of real estate and, and commercial property where no one's coming back to work. All these things are on the horizon. You can see them. You can read about them on the front page of newspapers, and yet our government is telling us everything is fine when it actually looks like very little is fine, and it's about to get a whole lot worse. Don't look now, folks. Joe Biden. He's headed to re-election in this environment, and he's already tied with Donald Trump. I don't have a crystal ball for the future. I got no vision for what's at stake, but I can see what's on the horizon, and it doesn't look good. Speaking of vision, I can tell you if you do business with Vision Computer, you're going to save some money. The time people are looking to save money, Vision Computer can not only save you money, they can give you better than what you get at the big box stores if you need a computer. They can build you laptops and desktops for your home or your office. You got multiple employees or multiple kids, they need laptops or desktops, let Vision build them. They'll build what you need and want. They'll make them upgradable so you don't have to worry about in two years needing something new. That's great. On top of that, though, they're going to service your computers for you. They're going to give you great, world-class, award-winning IT tech support. You call them. They answer the phone. They fix the computer. You don't have to bring it in. They can do so much remote printer support, email support, virus support, install support, disinstall support, you name it. 
Vision Computers, 404 Compute, any one of you nationwide for your business or your home, 404 Compute. Call them, ask about the Eric Erickson special. They can save you some real money building computers, 404 Compute or visioncomputers.com. If you go to visioncomputers.com, you won't see about the Eric Erickson special, but if you call them and ask about it, they can save you some money. Greetings, welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. This hour of the program brought to you by First Liberty Building and Loan. You know, talking about the economy and banks and, and not knowing what to do, if your bank, if you're a small businessman and you're looking to grow and banks are giving you a hard time, you you, you see potential, you're buying a building or you're building a building or you're buying a franchise, this is a sort of opportunity where First Liberty shines. Uh, they make their own lending decisions. They've been helping businesses grow since the early 90s. FirstLibertyGA.com. FirstLibertyGA.com. Reach out to them. Tell them I sent you to spend 10 minutes with them. See if they're a fit for you, you for them. FirstLibertyGA.com. Now, Brian, let's go to your call. Welcome. How are you? Hi, Eric. How you doing? Love the show. Good. What's going on? Hey, so I guess uh, it's kind of a two-parter. Uh, first is how do they measure the consumer index? Because I do know that they talk about how strong that is. And to follow up, having just looked over a monthly budget, I know how easy it is to overspend uh, unintentionally. And I like to think I'm semi-responsible. Are they looking at that completely wrong or willfully wrong in terms of people just irresponsibly spending instead of us having additional oh, money? The, yeah, okay, so that, that's that's good. Okay, so they're not looking at your spending. They're looking at the prices of the things you buy. So the consumer price index uh, looks at, for example, grocery prices and gas prices and the prices of things like going to a movie, then they break them into components. So you have uh, producer prices, which focus on um, the costs of production within the supply chain. And then they have uh, the core inflationary markers, which exclude groceries and energy for the other necessities of life. They can break these out. And and what the, the Federal Reserve really likes to do is they look at the core prices minus gas. So take gas out of the equation. And when the cost of your milk and your bread are growing, a lot of that is a warning sign to the Federal Reserve that there are other constraints within the economy that are causing prices to go up. So they're, they're, they never look at what you spend. So they're not looking at you, Brian, saying, my, or, or all of us collectively saying, my gosh, if only they would buy X instead of Y. They're not looking at that. They're looking at what is the cost of X, what is the cost of Y, and is that price growing or decreasing or holding the same? They really do get concerned, however, even though they, they pull energy out of the mix because energy is very volatile. Uh, if energy prices continue to go in a certain direction over time, that is a sign to the Federal Reserve that we've got longer term problems in the market because you can have a massive energy fluctuation in the cost of gas, for example, but then it will recede over time. And it's also seasonal and they know the seasonal increases. But if it's increasing outside of reason for the seasons, you, you got problems. Now, what are the sorts of things they look at? They look at the cost of food and beverages, in particular, breakfast cereal, milk, coffee, chicken, uh, beef, pork, wine, full service meals and snacks. They look at the cost of housing. They look at the cost of clothing. They look at the cost of transportation, both traveling on plane, the cost of new cars, the cost of insurance for cars. They look at the cost of medical care. They look at the cost of recreation, like what's a TV cost these days? What's a pet cost these days? What is a product for a pet cost these days? They look at the cost of tuition for colleges and private schools. And then they look at other goods and services, like, for example, funeral expenses and haircuts. How much do they cost? They wrap these things up and they show the core, uh, the consumer price index for food, for energy, for everything minus food and energy, for all the items minus food and energy. If everything is trending up, that's a big red flag. We still have inflation on the horizon. Regardless of what you're spending it on, it's the price of the products you're buying that matter. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. 
More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.